very important. So um, we're we're back, uh, and uh, I am so so um, what's impressed. Uh, with the body of work that I've been watching, uh, a podcast <laughs> available on Instagram and, and YouTube. Uh, he's a podcaster, he's a YouTuber, uh, he's a mortgage agent, and, and also the founder of Financial Solutions. And he's got really a, an incredible wealth of wisdom uh, to offer the community in, in the respect of finances. So I am so excited to introduce Roy Simon to you. Please welcome him. Thank you for having me. That was a <laughs> wonderful introduction, by the way. Very colorful. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it's really, um, the pleasure is all mine. And I have to say that I'm a big fan. I, I go through your episodes and I like, and I'm like, hmm, I learned something today. So I appreciate what you do. But you had to have a journey to get there, right? Um, so tell us. A little bit about uh, you know your motivation, your inspiration to be, you know, kind of catapulted into the financial industry. How did that happen? Well, I mean, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, you've got uh, a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a journey is definitely the word to use. It's been a long path to get here. Um, I would say it started primarily when I was buying my first house, and I bought my house pre-construction. So. Long story short, the way that works is you sign on that line for a certain price and they tell you it's going to be done at X date. And me thinking that everything was fine and dandy, I said, okay, when X date gets here, I'm going to just get my keys. Not realizing that I had to get a mortgage to close on said property. So okay. I was notified two months prior to closing that you need to have your mortgage. Where is it at? This is where we're at right now. Can you give us the information? And I'm like, what do you mean? What information? What are you talking about? You should tell me where my mortgage is. Isn't mm -hmm. that how this goes? Mm -hmm. And um, I had to scramble to figure out how to get a mortgage to close on this property so I don't lose my deposit. And I had to converse with a bunch of different mortgage agents and professionals in that space, in that time frame, to get the job done. Got yanked in a bunch of different directions, wasted a bunch of time and money. Um, ultimately, I did close, so I got my keys. But when I reflected on the, the, the whole journey to get to that point, I realized quickly that one, I should have been more prepared. Two, there should have been a lot more information out there for me to know what to do. Yes. And um, also re reflecting, I, I realized I got manipulated and taken advantage of because of my desperation in that moment. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to kind of be exactly what I wish I had access to in that time. So I set out to be the difference I wanted to see. And here I am today. I love that, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you have a beaming wife there in the audience. She's, lovely. She's like, I love him. <laughs> Amazing. Well, th that that is definitely um, a, a really uh, like a raison d'être uh, for what you do. And um, you know, there's one of the episodes that I watched uh, about uh, you had like a truth moment. Uh, you were talking about uh, a time in your life when your credit score wasn't the best, uh, but you learned from that and you're able to teach on how to remediate the credit score. So can you tell us about how you can go about doing that and maybe some nuggets about um, the value of credit right. or, or as it relates to financial literacy? For sure. And the name, it starts with it's financial. Um, and just before I even got into this space, I used to have a YouTube channel. And that's where I used to share a lot of golden nuggets about how to have yourself in your best financial literate state and really just maximize your finances. And that was where I was just kind of just teaching little things here and there because I used to work at the bank and I would tell all the information that I learned at the bank to the peers that I had. Can you tell us which bank? TD. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, right. and um, that's where I kind of got my knack for just sharing information. Mm -hmm. And it started a lot with just the basics of having good credit because... I don't know about you guys, but it's very difficult, especially in this time where we're seeing prices at astronomical highs, to buy everything cash. You're going to have to rely on credit yes. at some point. Yes. So if you want to go and get a new car, the chances of you having the full amount to buy that car outright is slim to none. And by the time you do have that amount of money, you need it's probably going to be a new car you want that is more expensive than the one that you were saving up for. So you need to access credit and you need to be able to have good standing so that you can have the best type of prices associated, associated with that financing. So um, your credit history is one of the biggest things that are going to help you determine having a good credit score. So that's why I really set out to, you know, resonate with the younger generation and, you know, keep your finances fly <laughs> so that it's something that you can actually take pride in and be confident in. And that starts with, you know, having good credit and starting credit from an early age. It's, it's, mm. not, a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And having that history 
is so pivotal in how much of a credit score you're going to have and just having the best financial position. So um, that's really where it begins. And some of the mistakes that I made, I like to share and be candid sure. about. So when I had a credit score of 585, I said, well, you know what? This isn't the end of the world. I can fix this. And here's how I did it. And here's how you can too. And also avoid getting into that situation to begin with. So um, your credit is huge. It's one of the main factors that help you get a mortgage and will help you, you know, not go through the hurdles that I had to clear when I, get my first, when I got my first house. And um, it's just about knowing better so you can do better. And mm -hmm. that's just what I take pride in doing. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your, you know, your candor. Uh, but for those who are um, learning the, the value of credit, uh, so a score you said of 580, would that that is Typically not the not best. A, not on the good side. Okay. No. <laughs> what what is a good credit score then? So you really want to be around that 680 mark and above. Um, a, a lot of people have this uh, undying affliction to have like an 800 and 850. Is it necessary? I mean, for the most part, you're going to have access to the same things that people who have a 680 or a 690 do, right? And it's just about being in a good standing, not necessarily the number specifically. If it's 891 versus it being 890, it's not that big of a difference. What you really want to do is to make sure you're in the good standing. There's good and there's bad. You want to be on the good side of things. So 680 and above is really where you want to be to take advantage of the best type of pr pricing and the best type of treatment when it comes to seeking out credit. Okay. So, so how do you bounce back? How do you remediate your credit score? Whew. Well, how, um, how did you do it? <laughs> Uh, first and foremost, just identifying what I was doing wrong. Um, to, to really improve in any area in life, you've got to figure out where do I stand right now? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? What can I continue doing? What do I got to stop doing? Um, one of the biggest things that I was doing wrong was overutilizing my credit products. So one of the biggest things that help you determine what your credit score is, is your utilization. And what that means is how much credit do you have access to versus how much are you actually using? So if you've got a $1,000 credit card and you have a $300 balance on it, you're using 30%, that's 30% utilization. And that's right around where you want to stay. Going above 70% utilization is where you get into the red zone. So I was over leveraged and over utilizing a lot of my credit products. So what that really required me to do was be aggressive and be focused on paying down those balances so that I could show that I'm being responsible. I can handle these things because when you're over utilizing it, how you're looked at is you don't have full control over what it is you have access to, which is a bad thing. So that was the biggest thing for me. Um, and also making sure that you're just being on time and um, being very uh, diligent with your payments. So you don't want to be late and you don't want to be missing payments entirely. And that's just one of the biggest things that can help change your whole trajectory. And it's also one, I think one of the easiest fixes. It was as simple as me just putting in a reminder on my phone. We all have our phones every single day. Reminder every month, first of the month, pay that bill. And it's, it can really be that simple. Okay, and, and that's a really good um, advice. But what about people who don't have credit history? Good question. Um, credit history is one of those things where I think it's just a matter of not trying to do too much in, all in one swing. Um, you wanna make sure you're establishing yourself as early as possible, and that way you're building your credit history over the course of time. Um, if you, it's, it's based exactly what it is, it's credit history. You can't force time to take place in a short amount of time. So you, mm -hmm. what you wanna do is get ahead of that horse early mm -hmm. and start as early as possible. So for example, when you're 18, get that small credit card and slowly handle that responsibly. Like if a, like a store credit card? Like a store one? Like, yeah, you yeah. know, a Walmart credit card okay. or my first credit card was a PC financial credit card. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that because what it allows me to do is have a small credit make myself get acquainted with how credit is used and not all also mishandle a large amount of money and then be in a hole that's hard to dig out of if I have a tough time grasping the concept needed. So, you know, you start with a credit card, then before you know it, you have a phone bill, that also contributes to your credit score. Then maybe you have a line of credit. Maybe you get a car loan, make those payments on time. And before you know it, you have an entire resume of how your credit is actually kept track of. And that's really what lenders are going to be looking at. And all the people and all the institutions that are you're going to be reliant on in the future can see, oh, okay, for the last 10 years, he's been doing this since he was a young lad. <laughs> so now. A young lad. Yes. And now he's, he's uh, doing fabulous. So uh, are you saying... Um, if you very you put yourself in a really strict regimen of paying on time, um, you know, doing all the right things, you can bounce back like in six months, a year. What's realistic? So it, it's going to be um, circumstantial. It's going to be different from person to person. Um, for me, 
Well, it, it really de- it really depends on what is it that's making your score what it is. Mm-hmm. For me, like I said, it was that utilization. Mm-hmm. And once I was able to bring those balances down to where they're, they're supposed to be, right. um, based on the criteria, it quickly turned around and now I'm happily in the 700s. And that's in a matter of a couple of months, right? That wasn't too long ago. So I think a lot of the times we get down on ourselves and we're like, oh, I'm here, I'm at rock bottom. But the problem is we stay there or we mm-hmm. think it's hopeless and we do nothing. And doing nothing means your situation is not going to change. So you really got to figure out, okay, what am I doing wrong right now? And that might require talking to somebody and then doing the things that are necessary to change your situation. So for example, maybe someone else's problem is they've had a couple of late payments. Well, what you need to do then is get on the right track and make some on-time payments so those late payments are in the history or in your your past. Mm -hmm. So everyone's remedy is going to be a little bit different. Um, but it, like I said, it just matter. It, it really just depends on you having those conversations and figuring out where you stand and figuring out what you need to do to get to where you want to be. And that's um, that's amazing. And I, I think there there's some people who may have um, you know they put their head in the sand and they don't want to look at their credit. But it's it's important to uh, keep looking to see what's going on because we're in a time where there's identity theft and mm. it's it's happened. Uh, to you know, close people uh, in my life, and people have purchased things with their card unknowing to them, right. and then they're affected. So, yeah. And I and, and uh, even to speak to that point, like it is just largely, especially in my upbringing in my community, money and finances is one of those things that nobody wanted to talk about, and it was a little bit uncomfortable, and it was just something that was a little bit self-conscious for a lot of people. And I think that if you have a better understanding and you become more comfortable and you can feel fly about your finances, it helps you feel a little bit more comfortable having those conversations and then also identifying maybe what you could do better. Mm -hmm. And that's why maybe some of us stay in those places a little bit longer than need be because we don't ever address them. We don't talk about it. And then before you know it, a year passes by, right? And then that could have been a year that you used to fix your situation or improve your status, right? So for even to answer the question from before, like how long could something take? It starts with you. Mm, so true so true so what is next for you Ah, next um (laughs) i am i'm also a real estate investor so i have four units that i own um i live in one with my lovely partner and our son um and i rent out the other three and my goal right now is to continue to share information with people um because i think a lot of people a lot of the time I, i get questions like how do you do it and I'm like, I was in a very, <laughs> you know, not a, a situation that I wasn't really proud of not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I think is possible for a lot more people than they realize. So I really want to encourage and empower people and uplift people to realize that what you want isn't outside of your grasp. It's not impossible. It just starts with you figuring out the right information. And I want to be that starting point of the information that they probably need. Um, so continue to share that information, continue to, you know, grow my own knowledge and improve my own situation as well. And also, I want to I wanna retire early and spend a lot of time with my family, and that's something I'm working hard towards as well. Oh, well, we applaud you for all of that. That is a wonderful accomplishment. And tell us, where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at flynancial.solutions. That's two Ys in financial. Um, and you can find me on YouTube as well, um, where I have changed it from you, uh, Who's Fly TV to Financial Solutions. So everything is all under one umbrella. Awesome. Thank you so much. Roy Simon, everyone. Financial Solutions, please follow him on social media. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's been part of the show. Thank you, all the guests. Thank you, show uh, show sponsor TEAO uh, Canada. We really appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you. And follow us, uh, the, the NikkiClarkNetwork.com and on uh, Instagram, NikkiClark31. So we'll be back again. And uh, we just want to keep those good stories out there to help move you uh, in the right direction personally and professionally. Thank you. God bless. We'll be back. <laughs>